Coming at you from the 2023 Red Alert 2 World Cup. We're here in the professional division, and today we have our grand finals. And I'm just going to drop a quick spoiler here. You're going to want to sit down and get excited and grab some popcorn because this match is absolutely non-stop action until the very end. As a quick reminder, in this tournament, we do have three different game modes. Now, each of those game modes will have its own grand finals and its own champion, so be sure to check out those other videos as well. We have regular Red Alert 2, we have Yuri's Revenge, and today we have the Blitz game mode. It's actually a mod of my own creation smaller maps, faster build speeds, and non-stop chaos as you're about to see. Today we have our defending World Cup champion, Kian the Octo Kid, known currently as the number one Blitz player in the world. He's defending his crown against Luke the Jedi, an unorthodox tactician at the top level who took down Marco to get into this game. There can only be one champion, so let's get right into it. But first, I gotta give a big shout out to Tracks NYC, the YouTube channel that gave me a thousand dollar donation to help sponsor this tournament. I truly appreciate you guys. RA to the moon. Yeah, Luke versus Kian, man. Uh, you know, I, Kian, obviously Kian is, is, you know, has won so many Blitz events over the years, but Luke in the last couple months has really grown uh, grown into it and has always been a good Blitz player. He just has incredible, incredibly high actions per minute. He's a creative tactician. And in this moment, he is standing and gunning down our reigning World Cup champion here. Uh, get those predictions in, guys. Type red or yellow. Let's see how you guys are feeling about this one. Uh, and so you see Kian trying to drive right past that fodder to click down the tanks. And Kian with that superior unit control and micro driving right past those conscripts getting those tanks on the backside and then getting his own conscript bundle and somehow you know you take a freeze frame of that from the beginning and it looks like it would be coming up all luke but again that one just comes down to unit control and micro now luke on the back end defender's advantage has the money for it spamming sentry guns to keep himself alive here should be able to hold this position um but the storm is still coming. Uh, he's got some AFK conscripts on the backside. Again, just spamming, spamming, spamming cons, uh, the sentry guns. Uh, Kian now alting the War Factory is going to get it. War Factory goes down. Uh, so Kian pulls out. Kian on the backside now. What do we got? Uh, uh, oh, our unit counter's off. But anyway, one War Factory. Ah, the three to one War Factory. So Luke losing that War Factory. He needs to get another War Factory up ASAP. ASAP, as in yesterday. He's got 5k in the bank. He's got the money for it. The War Factory comes up. Kian on three now. Luke on two War Factories. Luke with the fodder advantage. <laughs> Luke just gets zapped by so much lightning. The lightning picks up a nine pack, roasting a bunch of conscripts. Players continue to pump that that those conscripts. Man, I again, I know I've said this every time we play this map, but I swear this in a different world, this could have been this game, the game conscripts like using infantry like this in the game you throw your infantry in front the tanks support them like this beautiful kind of yin yang thing all of a sudden there's too many you bring some dogs instead of just mass dogs i love the conscripts getting action here big conscript advantage for kian now uh some some of kian's dogs go in front taking out most of, most of luke's fodder i think luke's gonna lose a lot of his fodder here he does have a couple sentry guns but yeah luke's gonna try to uh, try to apply counter pressure here he does get the higher ground now kian finds himself in the crater luke on the outside so it does have a nice elevation advantage for a moment gives him some time to get some conscripts back into the fight now luke going to switch over to radar radar and desolator coming that'll pretty much nullify and remove the conscripts from the game pretty much conscripts are going to be pumped on this map until one player goes radar five war factories for kian four for luke so luke even though going down a couple war factories early on has got himself back in this game going radar and being behind a one war factory is okay that's what you get for getting the desolator advantage uh luke does get in and this could be first blood here <laughs> Uh, well, oh, never mind. Sorry, uh, Kian, Kian already got it and got a War Factory. Uh, from I was looking at their bases right now. I'm like, have these guys gotten anything yet? Oh, uh, the engagement continues to go on. My mind's melting. Kian hops to the top side. Desolators blow in the crater. Conscripts go down. Now no fodder for either player. Luke's tank's getting a little bit befuddled here. Kian coming on top of that engagement. But he's got Desolators Elite Rhino for Kian as well. Kian takes a hop back. Going to use that Elite Rhino to melt Desolators. The Elite Rhino weapon... Uh, is incredibly powerful versus infantry. A regular rhino takes like five shots to kill a dog. The elite one is actually really, really good at cleaning up infantry. So I love that micro there from Kian to grab his elite rhino and clean up those desolators, uh, which is Luke's only advantage at the moment. 5k in the, in the bank for Luke. Paradrop on the backside uh, for Kian. Let's see if he can try to sneak that in and grab a war factory. Uh, see if Luke sees it here. Uh, now Kian's own Desolator's in. He's on six War Factories. Six War Factories. And Luke Luke now with a War Factory advantage. Luke throws a Sentry Gun to stop a pair drop. Not going to be enough. Very, very annoying uh, to lose that. And let's see what else he can get. He goes for... Oh, he's going to go for the Power Plant. That's a good move. Got good value there. Okay, in the middle, Deso War, Drone Wars. Crate is out. 
six war factories to and luke still luke with a war factory advantage similar financial position here luke gets in and grabs the uh, the miner you guys unfamiliar oh big deso hit he hits his own tanks as well but does get a pretty good ah uh, kian dances off though nicely and then luke kind of zones himself out allows kian to go up and grab a war factory which was nice uh luke's gonna need to get some drones in this oh he's got desolate desolators desolators Desolator does deploy a little bit late to me. Luke brings this uh, the miner home. That miner does uh, deploy into an oil. Uh, Kian's got more reinforcements coming. Luke not switching over to drones here. Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to survive this. Not looking good now. No Desolators in the fight. No switch over to drones. Um, and yeah, on this map at the top level, we've seen players kind of not going over to drones just because it's like... If you if you stop your rhino production on this, it's gonna be very very tough. Wow, and and honestly, I always misread this when there's this many war factories because you go from zero tanks to ten tanks in about three seconds. So Luke has no army. Luke has ten tanks. Luke has rhinos again. I thought Keen was about to roll through there, uh, but yeah, I mean Luke still has massive production. With that being said, Luke does put himself broke now. Uh, Luke maybe just buying too many desolators. Oh, goes over to battle attack. That's why he went broke. Desolators, desolators, desolators. Both players continuing the rock, paper, scissors game with their drones. Um, so, Kian, no switch over to tech yet. Seven war factories. Seven war factories. Um, oh, oh, and, and Kian gets another para drop doing work on the top side. I think that was another para drop. Kian finding value wherever he can. Looking for value in the nooks and crannies. I love that scrappy gameplay like that. To have all this going on in the middle, have conscript para drops on the backside finding value. You love to see it. Luke's Desolator is now going to force Kian to take a hop out here. Kian needs to get some drones into the fight. So you Luke can try to pull these Desolators uh, back to the sentry guns if possible. Kirov reporting. Okay, Kirov. And Luke? Luke's going to win this game, right? I mean, Luke got over Luke about a year and a half ahead on tech. What do you guys think? Oh, oh God, and Kian, Kian again finds a way to grab a War Factory. Oh, the snipe. Oh, Luke! Luke, I was just rooting for you, buddy. Oh my gosh, and Kian with the one-two little high-low action, pulls Luke low, goes high, and Kian, uh, Kian playing that very, very nice. Um, yeah, Luke, and Luke just took some hits there in his production. I thought being ahead on tech, I thought that Iron Curtain would get him some value, but as soon as that happened, Kian took out the Iron Curtain advantage. Uh, this flag, this Kirov's not supported at all. Kian's, Kian has this more of a standing army. Um, Luke needs to scramble some flak. There's a Boris on the field, uh, which I love in theory. Not sure I would love it if I was betting on Luke. Um, Iron Curtain now for Kian. Um, I take back what I said earlier. Yeah, Kian. So Kian, uh, Kian's been in the driver's seat all game here. Uh, just you know, he's been he's been on Luke's side of the field, getting value, and Luke has not been on Kian. I mean, look at the craters. Look at the lack of craters on this side of the map. Uh, but I did think I think that switch over Luke was able to keep up his production. Made that perfect switch over to Tech. Um, yeah, but Luke, honestly, but Kian is just uh, just bites, bites in pieces. Um, that para drop, uh, that high low, you know, little, obviously that IC dive. Um, each of those little hits just slowly, slowly stack up, and all of a sudden it's an end game, and you and you see this. You see Kirov's pouring out of multiple war factories. At some point, the more war factories you have, obviously the faster your units are going to build. At some point, you have so many that multiple war factories have to pump them out. Um, and so he's going to pump out the Kirovs. Now he's going to bring drones behind. Try to support these Kirovs with drones. Um, ooh, big Deso hit for Luke. Iron Curtain now. So Kian's going to Iron Curtain to try to support these Kirovs. So you see he stutter stepped with the Kirovs. I see now take out the flak tracks. He cleans up all the flak tracks. Very, very nice synergy there. Drones to deal with these rhinos on the backside. And now the Kirovs can come in. Um, Iron Curtain now for Luke. Uh, Kian over to a nuclear missile as well. Uh, oil on the top side goes down. War Factory goes down. What else can this get here? Uh, maybe this oil, possibly? Targeting those. He was trying to target those perimeter oils. A few more Kirovs coming. Rhinos on the bottom side. Uh, para drop on the top side. Oh my gosh. What do you think? Surely the beginning of the end here. Uh, and look at that. What a What a beautiful war machine. Beautiful war machine for Kian on the backside. Uh, Soviet versus Soviet, though. You know, don't count Luke out. Um, Luke, Luke is Luke. If you get any of you guys who saw his prelim game, uh, Luke knows the maps well. He's a tactician, and and once Allied gets in play, he he has a better chance of winning for sure. So um, yeah, well played by both players in that first point. Kian takes it home.
All right, here we go. So now over to point number two, allied versus allied. Yeah, this is where I think things can get interesting. Um, and if anything is going to shift into into Luke's favor, it would be more with these mixed factions. Now, on this map, we saw that there's this bona fide meta at the top level. You want to put one oil right here. You want to put sentries here. This higher this higher zone is so valuable. Basically, everyone just neglects my island. This this airport gives a crazy Ivan para drop that no one cares about, which hurts my feelings um, a lot. So, uh, yep, and there it is. So there's that There's that top pillbox on the hill. Oh, he was able to, yeah, top pillbox on the hill. Um, so Luke, yeah, Luke's, in Luke's blitz game to get here, I'm actually forgetting a little bit. Uh, Luke beating, sorry, uh, Luke beating Marco. Luke beating Marco? Oh, yeah, Luke beating Marco. Man, it's blurring a little bit. We've been streaming a lot. Okay, on here. Sorry, Kian pushing right in. GI's into that pillbox. Grizzly's in. Uh, yeah, the GI IFVs. We saw Luke kind of trying to mix and match in his allied game um, previously using some IFVs, using a pretty diverse portfolio of different things in the allied arsenal. And on paper, it's fun, man. I think it's what every new player is like. Well, what about this? You could IFV here. You could do a couple. You could do a sniper, and you could do and have all these fun with all these different things. And, and in theory, it seems like a good idea, but against a good player like Key, and all of a sudden he's got grizzlies and dogs down your throat, and there's nothing you can do about it. But um, and it did work for Luke. Luke, uh, some very, very impressive wins to get here versus Marco, taking down Marco, um, you know, the GOAT, to get into the, the finals here. So Luke's definitely proven himself. He's proven he's got the tactics. Let's see if he can pull it out here. Key in with the higher, big higher ground advantage. Luke pushes right in. Nice bundle of GIs to open things up. And Kian going to continue to hold this position. He is building pillboxes into that zone, so he intends to hold this higher ground here. IFV out of range of that pillbox. Nice. One Rocketeer, a little bit annoying. Oh, that Rocketeer takes out the IFV. Very annoying. And now an Eagle out as well. So Kian over to uh, uh, early Eagles. Luke needs to get an IFV. Okay, IFV out. And now Sniper. Sniper now for Kian. Now Luke needs to be careful. Uh, not only will the Sniper take out those GIs, but also he could he could uh, get a, an, an elite ve uh, IFV out of it. Okay, uh, oil goes down. Okay, so Luke able to find a little bit of value there. Hey, you find the value in the nooks and the crannies, boys. It's like loose change. You find it in the nooks and the crannies. Demo truck comes out. Oh, that's annoying. Very, very devastating. Keen was able to jump in and grab that demo truck. Luke had to dive on it. Took some nasty splash damage to his standing army here. Now Keen's going to apply pressure to the MCV. Uh, there's quite a few pillboxes on the top side. Oh, Keen, and Keen goes back. Oh, Keen joins up with his pair drop at the back of his base. Keen has a pair drop back left. He joins his tanks up with it. And Luke, Luke has to bring his GIs back to defend the pair drop. He, has, he brings his Grizzlies down. Keen dives on the MCV, but then pulls off. That was a good move. He would have lost that army. A pair drop on the back side, uh, eating Luke up. And Luke does keep himself is there any light at the end of the tunnel here let's look at the money kian on 10k luke on 5k eight oils six oils one war factory even tanks yeah, yeah. kian this afc is very very problematic so luke gonna have to go double afc now that afc is gonna immediately get sniped out oh he takes out the barracks instead the sniper iv is feasting he's this is iv is gonna go elite yeah there it is all right, so the elite IFE, that's going to be tough. Uh, now 8 to 4 tank advantage uh, for Kian as well. Rocketeers in. Got Patriot missiles, luckily, but um, very, really tough uh, to get back into this position. Um, Kian, I mean, Kian just doing what he does, right? I mean, Octo Kid stuff, he's just everywhere right now. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Does finally make that dive on the MCV. MCV goes down. No barracks, no AFC, only a war factory. That'll be it. All right, guys, over to point number three now. It is best of seven here in the Red Alert 2 Blitz World Cup and Luke fighting to stay alive. I'll tell you what, man, he hasn't found much here today in terms of momentum. Um, I don't think in either of their last two games there was really any point. Well, there was in that first Texas game. He made a savvy tech push that could have swung things, but... Um, it only lasted for a few seconds. So, Luke, uh, we're over here on the Spark map. Crate in the middle gives a Tesla tank that turns into a Tesla uh, coil. This para drop gives um, Tesla troopers. In their game on this one, Marco actually opened off and took the, para the airport. I feel like he did it for me. The pro players always ignore my sh silly shenanigans. I'm always like, hey, Marco, can I interest you in an airport that gives Tesla troopers? Marco's like, no, must build rhinos. 
Um, but actually, Marco did take the airport and use the Tesla troopers. I think he lost the game, but don't tell anyone. Uh, Luke needs to get over to radar. I, I don't... He Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, good idea. Good idea. Okay, I like that. I like that. Pulls his attention topside. Get away from the GIs. I like that. Okay. Sparky's out. No one wants Sparky? Someone wants Sparky. Everyone likes Sparky. There you go. Sparky's out. Tesla tank turns into a Tesla coil. All right, uh, four war factories to two. Yeah, okay, all right, and the Tesla coil right in that center zone, and just like that, uh, Kian finally gets a, gets a couple inches on the rope in this tug-of-war battle. Tesla coil, Sparky on the hill, nasty business. Um, and now uh, Luke can kind of play off that, try to edge this door open. Snipers to take out uh, uh, Luke's fodder, which is a bit annoying, but Luke's, uh, I think Luke's got the juice here. He's done a great job getting away from Kian's GIs. Kian was banking a lot on those GIs. Uh, big engagement here, big engagement. And again, you see Luke, the way he's just edging, edging, edging away from the GIs, away from the, uh, the dogs as much as possible. Um, GIs push in and take out Sparky, which obviously breaks my goddamn heart. Okay, four, five War Factories. Uh, for Luke. Three war factories for Kian. Luke's got 1,500 in the bank. Uh, if he doesn't go broke here and he can, can keep this pressure on, he should be able to get some value here shortly. Um, I think he's putting a lot of work into this uh, attack, but he hasn't quite gotten any any juicy bites yet. And does need to still be respecting these GIs. His, um, his lack of switching over to radar is incredible to me. So many war factories. So many war factories right now. Uh, yeah, the testicular fortitude required to not go over to radar here. It's very interesting. I guess he trusts his sentry guns. A uh, little split from Kian on the bottom side. Luke is struggling to match a little bit, then gets some of his tanks um, strung out. And that's what, you know, Kian, in positions like that, when Kian finds himself down, you'll see him. He's looking to split. He's looking to split and just try to increase the chances of the of other players um, making mistakes. And, and oftentimes he can find value like that. But the Rhino onslaught continuing through here now. Kian, he's got, he's got, the, he's got fodder. Uh, but I, these Grizzlies, I think, are going to be getting cleaned up. Oh, no, it's about a wash. Wow. Wow. Okay. Two, four, six, seven war factories. Five war factories. Eagles get down and grab a power plant. It's very annoying. Um, and Luke, and now, and both players smoking it to the filter, man. The five-minute mark. Look at the money. These guys going broke. They haven't lost oils i mean they haven't really been losing oils like these guys are pumping it these razor thin margins and i love seeing that that uh, meta develop at the top level for a long time in blitz at the top level the pros were like i don't want to deal with it i'm just going to overbuild my oil and every game you would see by the five minute mark all the pros would have 20k because they would just overproduce so they didn't have to try to do the calculation and now these guys they 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 don't want it they don't want extra money in the bank they want just enough money to stay alive just enough money to produce as much as they want uh obviously you rather have a war factory than an oil sparky on the backside almost gets a power plant i find that to be absolutely hilarious now it's luke's turn to split the field key and matching high low action now the gi is continuing to push and as long as there's no desolators out these gi's are going to give luke trouble all day Top side split uh, pushed out. Bottom side sp split pushed out. Both players take a moment to bury their dead, resharpen their axes, and catch their breath here. Demo truck for Luke. We saw him mixing these into his gameplay. Oh, the eagle already spots it, though. The eagle spots it. Kian's too fast. Uh, the demo truck did incredible value versus Marco. Um, but, oh, oh, that, okay, we just saw a really, really weird, uh, a really, really weird uh, component in the game you don't see very often there. I'll break it down in a second. Demo trucks pouring out. Now, we've seen Luke use a sneaky tactical demo truck, but the demo truck bongo line nonstop we have not seen yet in this tournament. Demo truck after demo truck after demo truck pounding now uncontested into Kian's base. Kian on this side of the field trying to deal with the rhinos. It's not going to work, and Luke takes home the win. My armpits are a disaster. I'm like, I am freaking out for Luke right now. Very, very well played, well deserved win there for Luke. All right, guys. So now over to point number four now. So in that last game, if you guys missed it, uh, what happened there? Now, right when the demo truck started. So again, we saw the demo trucks from Luke a little bit with Marco, but it would be like one demo truck, like snuck in with his army supported. Right there, Luke smashed the auto clicker on the demo trucks. And obviously the counter for that is the Eagles. Now, Kian picked up those demo trucks right away, and he was actually sniping some of them out, but... The problem was one of the demo trucks, 
I think we had that thing. I think the demo truck exploded and destroyed some of the eagles. I'll have to watch the replay. Sometimes if a demo truck's on a higher elevation, if it explodes, it can take down an eagle. But maybe the flak tracks just took out the eagle. Whatever the case, Kian lost the eagles, wasn't able to counter the demo trucks. Obviously, you guys saw the ending of it. Okay, now Luke's turn. Uh, we've seen what Luke can do on maps with GI rushes. He's Luke is one of the reasons why the GI build speeds were decreased um, a few months back is because of his GI rushes being too strong. Let's see what he can get done here. So the tricky thing right now is you need to use your Grizzlies, prevent the Rhinos from running over your Grizzlies. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you GI rush. Can he continue to press this position? Uh, four Grizzlies standing, no Rhinos on the field. Looking pretty good here. Uh, Kian will keep spamming those uh, sentry guns. Now you see Luke switch over to the Barracks Pro move. He cancels out the sentry guns. You need the Barracks to build sentry guns. No more sentry gun support. Uh, now probably going to alt that War Factory. Click, taking his time to click down the tanks. He does get an elite Grizzly. Luke rolls through, boys. All right, guys. Over to point number five now. Point number five. So... Uh, over to Toothpick. Toothpick, uh, this map, man, spicy, spicy allied versus Soviet action so far in the tournament. Um, I have no doubt it's going to impress here. A couple, several different viable options here, but the big one we've seen, of course, is controlling this center zone. Um, controlling the center zone and playing off it. The attacker advantage is really nice. Once you're here, you can go, you know, either lane down into your enemy's base, and your enemy can't really adjust their army around this. Uh, they get a little gummed up in their own base. So really, really nice uh, offensive advantage if you control the center zone. Both players building towards it here. Luke opening a bundle of conscripts. Kian opening some GIs. Um, yeah, the allied player, we talked about this with Snark on this map, definitely viable for the allied player to build more conservative. The gut shot on this map, we've seen we've seen so many positions where players are ahead, um, but their MCV gets sniped. So the gut shot's always very viable on this map. GIs do come back and help defend this position. Um, Grizzly's coming now, and Kian puts himself broke. Kian overbuilding GIs, overbuilding. He does save that oil, though. Wow, and so Luke doesn't get any value out of that. Wow, Luke does not get any value out of that. Um, that was surprising. Yeah, Kian, and Kian had to bring his Grizzlies from the other side of the moon, but was able to save off that oil. You saw Luke, he pulled his Rhinos, kept his Conscripts on it, just uh, did, didn't do the calculation right. The pillbox was there, didn't get any value out of it. Um, so now the base stretch from both players going right at each other here. Uh, Kian into that center zone, nice bundle of GIs, and Luke... Luke's going to need to do something about this. These GIs will melt that sentry gun. Luke continuing to apply pressure on the left side. Kian splits off those GIs. Yeah, this could be annoying. Luke sees it, though. Luke's got the sentry guns there. Uh, robot tanks. Of course, robot tanks. Genetically, that's obviously the move here. Uh, okay, so G GIs, GIs, dogs. All right, so Kian gearing up. So you see he's shooting the ground here. That's to get all of his GIs in a bundle so that you can get them all walking together and melting sentry guns together, as you're about to see. Uh, Luke trying to play defense with offense, continuing to dangle on that left side. The GIs need to be respected, though. Um, he and, uh, Luke does do a great job, though, spamming those sentry guns. Not only spamming the sentry guns, but then immediately repairing them uh, is huge there. So Kian now, uh, Kian now gets a barracks on this side uh, to pump GIs even closer. Both players grab their crates. On this map, the crates give V3 rockets, um, which uh, I'm glad these guys grabbed. Again, a lot of the pro players ignore those. Hurts my feelings. Uh, Naval is definitely valuable on this map as well, but usually we see pretty short games on this map, I think. Or at least so far in the tournament. V3 Rocket doing work. V3 Rocket doing work. I absolutely adore that. Uh, Luke finds himself taking a big bite. Oh, and perfect unit control. He runs over all of Kian's dogs there. It's exactly what you want to do with a big group of tanks. Try to get in a position where you can run over your opponent's fodder. Rhino's rolling through now. Kian quits out. And this is a great play to go back and look at because at the top level, you know, you see all these dogs and all these tanks and you just kind of think it's random. But you have to understand these guys are microwing their dogs and their tanks differently. And as soon as your opponent's dogs get out of position like this, if you can key in and run them all over, it's going to give you a huge advantage and that's ultimately what tips the tides in this battle in luke's favor all right so now over to uh point number six and hey any of you guys who are mathematically uh challenged here in the chat it's a best of seven boys if luke wins this he takes it home he's now playing his ally against kian soviet one of the nastiest nastiest soviet players in the world and uh kian's hungry man these guys in the chat john a little bit 
Uh, Kian says, give me a minute. Luke says, you don't get a minute. Um, just, uh, just a little bit of usual banter. Both these guys obviously want this. Um, we're talking about we're talking about the World Cup crown. Um, there's hundred dollars for each each game mode. So for Blitz, Red Alert Two, and Yuri's Revenge, each has a hundred dollar prize. It's a freeze out. All the money going to the winner. So a hundred dollars um, uh, going to whoever can win this series here. So uh, Kian fighting to stay alive finds himself on the ropes now. Oh, Luke on a 3-0 spree. Luke has won the last three games in a row after Kian coming out absolutely dominating this series. Um, and uh, hey, no matter which way she goes, both these guys have put on a put on a good, a good show so far here today. So Luke uh, opens a conservative. Uh, this is this is how I think this map should be played for Allied because late game you have so many things in your arsenal. You have you could go naval, you can go air. So I think this is the way Allied should play. Um, obviously, Kian tried to go aggressive, didn't work. Um, GIs and pillboxes, Kian will not. Yeah, Kian's not going to get through that. Uh, I like Kian's enthusiasm. Not going to work. Okay, so now GIs. Yeah, oh, and, and Kian, uh, wow, does clean up those GIs, but uh, questionable engagement there. He, he throws, he loses quite a few rhinos. Um, but yeah, Kian, I mean, Kian wants to be aggressive here, and he knows Luke, you know, Luke, one of those players, um, a self-proclaimed builder, a comfortable, very, very top-level allied player, and a comfortable builder. And uh, I think Kian in this position, you're seeing Kian, um, Kian doesn't want to get into a late game with a turtled allied player, especially um, the Jedi. Uh, Luke's so comfortable. If Luke could have 15 oils and 20 eagles, um, that's the kind of gameplay he wants to have in a 30 minute game. And he has no problem doing that. Uh, so I, I think Kian's aggression here makes sense. Obviously as a Soviet player, it makes sense as well. All right, so now Kian on his doorstep now. Uh, third War Factory out now for Kian. Only one War Factory for Luke. Luke going broke, just spamming GIs and pillboxes. Um, and, and now, oh, in the sentry walk from Kian. And Kian can really excel in these positions. Um, the high actions per minute for a player like Kian. Once the offensive player is able to turn the defensive advantage, obviously the static defensive structures into weapons um, for a player like Kian can be very, very nice. Uh, and so, yeah, now the sentry battles as well. But Luke has so many GIs. Kian does need to be careful. He's going to try to skirt past these GIs and does successfully do it here. But Luke hops back with the Grizzlies. Now MCV going to go down. MCV going to go down. He just sells it. Yeah, good move. He was going to lose it. Might as well get some money. He needs the money anyway. Uh, but more Rhinos coming. That's going to be all she wrote. Going to be all she wrote, boys. So but neither player um, able to make it happen for Allied on this map. This was one of our more balanced maps in Quick Match when you look at the stats, I believe. Um, but apparently at the top level, uh, Rhino, Rhino, Rhino Rush is what, what, what the cool kids are doing these days. And uh, I got good news for you guys who are here with us catching this one live or catching the highlight. I like all you guys equally. And the good news is that uh, we're burning barns. Burning barns. Uh, Desolator out. Yeah, okay. Desolator's in play now. Desolator's got a long ways to go. These GIs might, these GIs might feast a little bit. I'm surprised to not see Kian go forward barracks. Yeah, now he goes forward barracks. Forward barracks, forward barracks, forward barracks. <laughs> Kian's like, okay, yeah, Kian's like, okay, what are we doing here, buddy? Um, but yeah, Luke, especially players that are, that are kind of annoying each other like this, not quitting out like this, making other player work for it is, um, yeah, it's mental games, mental games. All right, guys, here we are. We're doing it, boys. We're living it. The Red Alert 2 World Cup Finals. What else could you ask for? We're burning barns. It's best of seven. It's 3-3. Three, three. Winner of this takes home 100 bucks. takes home the crown for the year. Loser of this takes that sad walk home. As always, guys, RedAlert2.com is the place to be. Tell your friends. Tell your family. You can learn how to download and play the game. You can join the community. We have tournaments each month for new and returning players. Um, it's fun. There's cash prizes, lots of players, lots of skill levels. Even if you can't hang with the best players in the world, that's okay. There's other guys who will, who will play games with you. It's a fun place to be. Uh, we also have Red Alert 2 merchandise now. I got cool t-shirts. We also have a Red Alert 2 comic book. Red Alert 2 War Torn Lovers. My own piece of fan fiction about Yuri and Tanya falling in love. Uh, and also a big shout out to Trax NYC, our sponsor for the Red Alert 2 World Cup. Uh, gave me a $1,000 donation a couple months ago. Uh, it's been helping me create a lot of content. Of course, all the money that comes into the stream does go back into the stream. Helps me create more content. We're trying to get more people watching, playing, and streaming this beautiful game, RE2 The Moon Boys. That's what it's all about. All the money in, 
back to uh back to keeping fuel on the rocket re to the moon okay pirate bay map here uh this is berg's map of that was played in the tournament last month it's a very very different blitz map um it's it's complicated it's weird um and uh did luke i thought these guys were both soviet no luke luke chose allied luke chose allied i think he switched at the last second okay uh, so, Luke pulling back now. Kian's Rhino's coming. Yeah, that was weird. I thought I thought Luke was set as Soviet. Anyway, no, he switched. He switched allied. He was just playing games, switching it up, trying to confuse Kian. Kian does get in. He's gonna dive on an oil. Takes some hits there. Now Luke gonna push him back. So Kian makes the dive on that oil. Gonna pay a few Rhinos for it. Um, anyway, the Pirate Bay map, guys, this one's very, very different. Crate topside gives a disc, which is always fun, and that's going to be coming here very, very shortly. Let's see if Luke can remember that. Third War Factory already out for Kian, and Luke just pumping GIs into the zone, trying to slow things down. In theory, this map, um, you'd think an allied player would be able to slow things down, um, uh, but... I mean, there is the, these bottom side. There's definitely some choke points here, very defendable. Top side, though, you can you can kind of have an attacker coming down these hills with an elevation advantage, which is scary. Uh, Luke's power plant top side is definitely exposed, and Kian uh, running and gunning here, doing what he does best with his rhinos. Uh, crates are out, and Kian has map control, so he will get them. Things not looking good here for Luke. Kian again gets up, uh, gets some more value there, grabs a power plant. Luke uh, Luke treading water here, but no no offensive cards in his deck for the moment. And that's the fifth War Factory. Critical mass for the Soviet player here. Um, Luke over to uh, Luke. Yeah, Luke only on one War Factory. Luke somehow, like, kind of staying alive, but uh, the MCV goes down. Kian throws his army. He doesn't care. He's got five War Factories. There's going to be another army behind it. Luke's got the AFC. He's got the barracks. He's got a War Factory. But at this point, he would need Kian to make a big mistake. And that could have been Kian's mistake. Luke grabs the disc. The Eagles get down. No, it doesn't matter, right? Surely it doesn't matter. The Eagles, the disc, the paradrop. Oh, Luke. Luke digging deep here. And Kian... Kian, he throws his army, he dives on the barracks. As soon as the player doesn't have an MCV, just one building at a time, chop him up. Uh, Luke, uh, Kian was able to scramble some flak tracks. Now Kian bringing a counterpunch. Somehow Kian has a tank advantage. He's being out War Factory 5 to 1. Disc goes topside, but there's just too much flak. Disc goes down immediately. That was Luke's only uh, ace in the hole here. Now Luke pulls the GIs. Um, he's still got his eagles, but no barracks. And yeah, we've talked about allied players. If you have a barracks, you have eagles. You have a war factory. We've seen crazy things happen. Without the barracks, it's tough. Uh, Luke, again, one of the best uh, GI GI players in the world here, but he would need an absolute miracle. Again, keying on the back of, of five war factories here. Uh, those flak tracks that came out for the disc now doing a pretty good job cleaning up, um, cleaning up the GIs as well. GIs, the GIs. <laughs> Yeah, it's just not gonna matter, not gonna matter. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, great game. Good back and forth. I mean you couldn't ask for a closer one. Yeah, quick. Those guys those guys were going to work. Those guys were going to work. I hope you guys enjoyed that match. Uh, Luke and Kian, big shout out to both those players for putting on a show. Uh, as we kind of wrap up 2023 here, I do want to just remind you guys, uh, again, this World Cup tournament is broken up into three different game modes. Uh, so we have regular Red Alert 2, we have Yuri's Revenge, and we have the Blitz game mode that you just saw. So be sure to check out the, the finals for those other game modes as well. Some really, really exciting top-level games. And as always, guys, I want to just say how much I appreciate all of the support, the likes and the comments and the subscribes and the shares uh, and the donations over these last couple years to help me with this project. Uh, you guys know how it goes around here all the money that comes in goes back into the stream um, to help me create more content and help me get more people watching playing and streaming this beautiful game so again i appreciate all the support behind the scenes the team at cncnet uh, any of you guys unfamiliar we play this game on an online platform that's ran on volunteer support so uh, blood sweat and tears is uh, is what keeps the engine running around here all the map makers and the mods um, and the players and the viewers all you guys man truly truly appreciate it i'm excited about what 2024 has in store uh, plenty more good games to come RA to the moon.